So, you want to play Project Winter, do you? Well, combining the best parts of multiplayer survival games such as Rust and Raft with the growing genre of social deception, a la Among Us, and slapping a dangerously short timer on the whole affair, Project Winter is an intense form of social therapy. There are two teams in Project Winter, the survivors and the traitors. The survivors' job is to escape their frozen hell by calling for an extract once they've repaired two installations somewhere around the map before the time runs out. The traitors' job, as always, is to prevent that from happening. Like many of the top-tier social deception games, Project Winter has its own in-game communication which you really should use instead of the usual Discord Skype. Ah! Begone, monster! Fire the cannon! The inbuilt voice chat lets you talk with those close to you, but drops off once you start to split up. This enables cunning plays like luring enemies away from others before plunging in the knife. The radio is an item that lets you circumvent this restriction by being able to talk to anyone else who has the same colored radio, no matter where they are on the map. Traitors start with the red radio, enabling them to hatch schemes from the offset whilst other radios are littered randomly around the map to find, or can be crafted in the cabin. In the top left of the screen are your keys to staying alive, your health, warmth, and hunger bars, along with the overall timer the survivors have to escape the map. Run out of health and you are dropped to your knees, waiting for an ally to pick you up, or an enemy to finish you off. Running low on warmth or hunger, will start to gradually deplete your health bar maximum value and over time will down you. In order to keep your warmth bar full, you merely need to visit the cabin to start heating up. Or you can craft a campfire at the crafting bench capable of sustaining multiple people whilst out in the wilderness. For your hunger, you need to scavenge berries from bushes and meat from animals. These raw components will sustain you a small amount. However, using the stove in the cabin will vastly improve their effectiveness. Combining the two together makes a delicious pot pie, restoring all of your hunger bar. Finally, if your health gets low, then you will need to use medicinal herbs for a small boost of health or craft a healing kit for a full heal. In the top middle of the screen is a small map that tells you which quadrant of the overall play area you are in. For a slightly more detailed lay of the land, there is a static map outside the cabin which also narrows down the location of your next objective. In the top right of the screen is listed the team that you are on and the survivor's current objective along with a separate timer to complete said objective. If the survivors do not complete the minor objectives before the separate timer runs out, the traitors are gifted special traitor care drops to further help them disrupt the survivors' plans. The traitors see the same objective as the survivors so you know what stage the survivors are at. In the bottom left of the screen is your radio and your item slots. Unless you craft a backpack, you are limited to carrying four types of items at any one time and those items that stack have a stack limit of three. Note these slots are used for everything your character carries, barring a radio if you are using one. Everyone begins the round together in the cabin with the game promptly announcing how much time you have before certain death strikes. Whilst in the cabin, no violence can be perpetrated, even if you know who the traitors are. At the far end of the cabin is the cooking stove and the crafting bench. Next to the bench is a shared chest to store helpful items for you and your allies. Be warned, anyone can leave or take materials from the chest, so the traitors may also benefit. On the near side of the cabin is the rescue radio that you will need to use once both objectives have been repaired. Closest to the fixed camera is the roll guide that you can peruse if you are using that particular set of rules. And finally, Next to the exit is one of the two exile voting booths, the other being directly outside the front of the cabin. When three people have voted for the same survivor at either voting box, that player is forcibly kicked from the cabin and can no longer enter and benefit from the free heat 
or any sort of crafting. To be able to use the cooking stove and workbench, you will need to scavenge resources from around the map first, to kill animals or harvest any of the map's resources. Every player at a basic level can falcon punch them to death. However, your killing efficiency increases when you equip a weapon or tool. Note, attacking any sort of animal will provoke them to defend themselves. However, be especially careful of wolves and bears who will hunt you down mercilessly. Weapons and tools can both be found around the map and crafted at the workbench. Whilst the weapons are varied and have different purposes, there are three main tools. The pickaxe, the wood axe and the scythe. Each of these tools increases your damage to both animals and players by the same amount. However, each of these tools respectively makes mining metal, chopping wood and harvesting herbs much quicker. At the workbench, you can use wood, metal, leather from animals and gun parts found in chests to create a variety of helpful items. Most notably of these, you can craft extra objective items from basic materials if you cannot find enough around the map. Now you're equipped, it's time to complete your objectives. The first objective is to repair the power station. Its location is always known to the players from the beginning and once investigated will give you a mission to collect a variety of spare parts or fuel. Once the survivors have collected the parts necessary to fix the power station, the second objective will be available. This will be to repair the escape vehicle or platform necessary to power on the rescue radio. To find the parts necessary to fix the objectives, the survivors must either locate bunkers strewn around the map or spend time crafting the parts themselves. The bunkers require multiple people to open, granting access for all. Inside, not only can you find parts aplenty, there is a chance you can get medkits, gun parts, vodka and more. Once the first objective is fixed, the survivors then need to locate the second objective. The map at the front of the cabin will show all the possible areas the second objective can be in. When this has been located, you can alert everyone else by activating the emergency beacon at the objective, letting everyone know exactly where to go. All that's left after the final objective is repaired is to radio for help and make it to the escape vehicle before time runs out. If the survivors in the vehicle are impatient and leave early, a second one can be called in, but that's the limit, only two. Now for the traitors. Whilst the survivors need to escape, whether the traitors are dead or alive, the traitors cannot escape and instantly win when the last survivor dies. There are specific traitor caches and traitor tunnels strewn around the map that only a traitor can access. Within the caches are energy drinks to permanently buff your life bars, weapons, poisons and traps. The tunnels merely help you traverse great distances more easily. Unlocking these caches or standing close to unaware survivors for periods of time will grant the traitors sabotage points. These points can be used in a variety of ways to slow the survivors down. They can prevent survivors from opening bunkers for a short period they can sabotage already fixed objectives, forcing the survivors to find more parts. And they can change the direction of various signposts around the map to confuse survivors lost in the wilderness. Traitors can also sabotage objectives and other interactables without spending sabotage points. If the traitor has a mine or poison, an option to booby trap any usable point will become visible. The strongest of traitor plays, however, is to remove a survivor from the game entirely. Whether punching them down, swinging an axe or blasting them with a shotgun, all players can be killed. In a full game, once all but two survivors have been killed, the survivors will gain a set of emergency care packages that rain from the sky to even the odds. When you are dead, you can talk to all other dead players no matter where they are and you can teleport between remaining survivors and traitors to ensure you remain near the action. Whilst dead, your four item slots are converted into three buffs and one debuff that you can apply on nearby living players. The three buffs are increases to health, warmth and food, whilst the debuff slows any players in the area for a short time, letting you interact with your teammates and the enemy to help ensure victory. 
Occasionally during a game, random global events will shake up the play, ranging from blizzards drastically reducing your visibility and your warmth to a solar flare that teleports players randomly around the map. These changes only last a short time but can make or break alliances between players. Don't lose your head. You've called for rescue and you're on your way to escaping with your trusted team when time runs out and the final blizzard arrives. Suddenly, staying in the cabin will no longer provide any heat and supplies can't compete against the chill. Your health starts dropping and your vision clouds. Can you make it to the end? Will your allies wait for you? Congratulations, you completed your first game. Pity you couldn't hold it together until the end. Now that your mission is over, those of you who fought competently will earn more survival points and winter artifacts. You can use these in the rewards and store page on the main menu to buy cooler outfits and flashy upgrades for your weapons and tools. If you save up enough points, who knows, you might even be able to afford the big one. All that's left now is to dive back in for another round, warm and snug in your new fashionable style. Now, time is short and I must leave. It's getting a bit nippy here, and these damn communications keep breaking. I hope we see each other again. When winter thaws, in another tutorial.